IVC. Uh, I'm Headley, another fat bearded man talking about records. Uh, and this video that I'm doing today is going to be a very, very belated uh, response video to a video that Mazzy, uh, the venerable Norman Maslov, made, um, I think, July of 2021. So we're talking two and a half years ago. And the video he made, he subtitled um, The Gospel According to Rock and Roll. And what he was doing was he was sort of showcasing um, artists from sort of late 60s, early 70s that were blending uh, rock and roll with uh, gospel, soul, R&B sounds. Uh, and his point of departure was Delaney and Bonnie. This is their second album, except no substitute, from 1969. Uh, their first album, Home, was also from 1969 uh, and was released on Stax. So it kind of gives you a clue as to what the sort of music you'd be expected to find. Um, Delaney and Bonnie would go on and work with Eric Clapton uh, and, and uh, various other artists, uh, George Harrison, um, which is where um, uh, Mazzy took his video. It's He, he looked at... Um, Sort of more in depth than I'm going to into into all those artists. Uh, actually, just uh, I don't know if he said that um, uh, Bonnie Bramlett uh, before this was was involved in in soul music because she was um, uh, one of Ike Turner's Iquettes. She was the first white Iquette um, back in the day. So yeah, this is a smashing album, and it's got the sort of people you expect to find. Um, Jim Keltner, uh, Bobby Whitlock, uh, Bob Keys, uh, Jerry McGee, uh, Leon Russell playing on it. And so uh, go and watch Mazzy's video if you haven't seen it. It's great. <laughs> As if Mazzy needs me giving him a shout out. Um, but yeah, go and watch it because he talks far more in depth about uh, Delaney and Bonnie and Eric Clapton uh, and some of the other artists that that, uh, that followed. Um but what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to um, take a slightly more... Um, the, the road less travelled, um, that are still very much in that, that genre, uh, but perhaps not as well-known, um, certainly not as well-known as Eric Clapton or, or George Harrison. Um, and there's a lot of crossover. You'll find um, many of the same uh, artists, uh, musicians, are playing across all of these records. Uh, there's, there seem to be a, a, a real sort of um, point that about... In fact, all of the records I will be showing you, will, well, I think almost without exception, apart from that Delaney and Bonnie, are either from uh, 1979... Uh, sorry, 1971 or 1972. There seems to be a period when uh, that gospel rock sound... Uh, was was going to be big, uh, and many of the the artists actually, much like uh, Delaney and Bonnie, were on the Electra label. So Electra clearly thought they were onto something. So one of the artists that um, is on uh, the Delaney and Bonnie album I just showed is uh, a backing singer uh, by the name of Rita Coolidge. Now you probably heard of Rita Coolidge. She 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 became big in I suppose the late seventies, but she started out very much as a backing singer, working with Delaney and Bonnie. And my, the first I'm going to show is uh, is her first album. Um, if you haven't heard Rita Coolidge's early early albums and you like that kind of gospel sound, you really can't go wrong with her first three. So that's her first one. You've then got her second album. Uh, so these were released in 196... That's uh, released in six, uh, 71. I believe this one's 72. It could be another 71. You know, doing more than one album in a year. Uh, and then uh, The Lady's Not For Sale, is that what it's called? Yeah, so those three albums, that's 73, I think. I wish, really wish they'd, I really wish they'd um, put them in, in somewhere you can find them. Anyway, yeah, as I said, 71, 72, possibly that was 73. But yeah, her first album is a cracking uh, blend of uh, gospel, soul, 
uh, and rock uh, with a bit of folk and a bit of country. Um, and um, you have got some amazing artists on this. I mean, it really is a who's who. I mean, the first track, you've got Leon Russell, Spooner Oldham, Clarence White, Cliff Eth- Chris Etheridge, Jim Keltner. Uh, elsewhere, you've got Booker T. Jones, um, uh, uh, Ry Cuda. Yeah, it's a real who's who. So it's it's not surprising that it sounds great. Um, there's some wonderful tracks on here. Um, as a tracker, Crazy Love, Van Morrison. She does a, a great version of Seven Bridges Road by um, Steve Young. But I will play you uh, one of these tracks and um, hopefully it might change, change your mind about Rita Coolidge. Uh, there you go. So, Rita Coolidge. Okay, so uh, Rita Coolidge. Next up, um, uh, Jim Dickinson, uh, or James Luther Dickinson, as he's called and billed on on his first album, uh, uh, Dixie Fried from 1972. This was literally released on Atlantic. This is a a Bear Family uh, repress from 2016. Um, He's one of those sort of characters in in music... um, kind of a Zelig kind of or a Forrest Gump kind of person who was seemed to be at, at, at important points all the way through you know he was he was a rock and roller to begin with started out um, I think he supposedly recorded the last great Sun single in 1966 Cadillac Man for the Jesters um, <laughs> on which he played piano and sang uh, voc- lead vocals on both the A and the B side despite not being in the band um, he then formed um, the Dixie Flyers with Mike Utley and, and, and a group of other uh, uh, artists um, that were kind of soul based um, music uh, who eventually I mean they, 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 they backed people like James Carr, Hank Ballard uh, Betty Lavette, but then when um, Jerry Wexler fell out with the Muscle Shoals rhythm section, and was looking for a replacement. He brought them in at, uh, to Atlantic as a, as, the, as their house band, um, where they they kind of played with Sam um, on Sam and Dave tracks, um, uh, Aretha Franklin, Delaney and Bonnie, uh, Brooke Benton, um, yeah, Delaney and Bonnie. There you go. There's the connection, um, and. He he would, you know, but he left because he he found found the sort of the the production of Wexler and uh, and the other um, Atlantic producers quite tricky for him to fit in with. And Dwayne Ullman suggested he should go off and, and and do his own thing, which he did. Which is when he went and recorded this. Although it was still released on Atlantic, so clearly he did he didn't burn bridges. But it's a great, lovely mix of sort of blues, country, and gospel, um, rock and roll. Um, there's some great, I mean, the, the, the lead track, uh, well, it's not the lead track, it's the first track on the second side, um, Dixie Fried, which is a Carl Perkins song, is incredible. Um, there's a, there's a Bob Dylan song, a Paul Siebel song, um, really lovely, really great, cool record. Um, he later on, um, would go on, I mean, like I said, he stayed in, it's sort of in the industry doing all kinds of things. He, he record, he produced uh, Big Star's third album. Uh, he worked with Green on Red, uh, Mojo Nixon, The Replacements, um, Toots and the Maytals, um, producing all their sort of stuff. And his two sons are in the North Mississippi All Stars, sort of blues, uh, garage rock group. Anyway, so, um, yeah. Great album, wonderful stuff. Gospel country rock. There we go. At an open night spot on the 
around. He's going to town at about 5.30. Old Dan comes around. He thought he would pack his coat and set the night in short. He reached in his pocket and he flashed a court and hollered, Rain for chillin' out with Ephraim. Rain for Cassie Fry. It's almost dawn and the cops are gone. And let's all get Dixie Fry. Went for his razor and he wasn't shaving. The boys all knew he jumped in a hop cause Dan was raised in the butcher shop. Rave on Rave on Taxi Rise. It's almost dawn and the cops are gone. And it's all, all fry me now. When I think about uh, rock and gospel, the, the figure that um, for me. Um, seems to be a, a, a key player is a guy called Don Nix. Now, um, this was his first album, 1971, um, uh, In God We Trust, and this is a wonderful, wonderful record. Uh, great gatefold. Um, a real... I mean, this pushes the gospel to the fore. I mean, obviously with a title like In God We Trust. Um, and uh, there's a, a combination of um, traditional songs like I'll Fly Away um, or Will the Circle Be Unbroken, but also he writes his own gospel songs as well. Um, and you've got backing from Eddie Hinton, Dave Hood, Furry Lewis on slide guitar. So you're starting to get that. This is on the Shelter label. That's the label that eventually, there you go, had to be um, <laughs> had to be changed because it looked far too much like the Superman shield. Um, DC Comics were not happy. Anyway, Don uh, Nix was uh, from uh, Memphis, and he went to school with um, Steve Cropper and Donald Duck, D Donald Duck Dunn, um, who he formed the the Marques with. Um, who after Don Nix left, he played um, saxophone for them, but after. After he left, they kind of morphed into being uh, Booker T and the MGs. Uh, so, you know, that's the sort of background that, that Don Nix had. He worked with Leon Russell, um, other artists, George George Harrison. Uh, in fact, he worked with George Harrison on the uh, concerts for um, uh, Bangladesh. And he put together the uh, the backing singers uh, choir uh, that, that, uh, that was part of that that. Uh, uh, project. Uh, so Don Nix did that. Um, so he also released in the same year, 1971, um, uh, Living by the Days. This is a record you see a lot um, kicking around. I've certainly over here in the in the UK, I see it. And this one is, again, it's on Electra. Um, and this has got all the sort of the usual people on it. Um, you've got, uh, hang on, where, where are they all? Um, David Hood, Donald Duck Dunn, Wayne Perkins, uh, Roger Hawkins. Um, uh, you got backing singing from what's called the the Mount Zion Singers, which includes Jeannie, uh, Jeannie Green, Marlene Green, Wayne Perkins. Uh, more on Jeannie Green to come. Uh, yeah, it's a cracking album. This, uh, like I said, unlike his first album, which is quite tricky to come by, this one you can find all over the place. Um, there's some sort of great tracks. I saw the light. Um, uh, yeah, but mostly it's it's uh, written and produced, arranged by Don Nix. Um, then in '72, he was part of uh, what was called the um, Alabama State Troopers, um, which is billed as Don Nix. Uh, Jeannie Green and Furry Lewis. So it's really nice that he gets uh, Furry Lewis up front on this playing some blues. Um, but a really nice uh, uh, live live album. Um, all the same people. Wayne Perkins on guitar um, playing with them. They got the Mount Zion band, they're called. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of some of the stuff that are from his two other albums. But a, a cracking album if you, if you want to fish it out um, or find it, seek it out. So Don Nix, I think, is just superb. I love him. 
Um, I've got other albums by him later, but I think those those three are the core. Well, 1971, 72, they fall in this category, don't they? So, yeah, check out um, some uh, Don Nix. Lonnie Mack, uh, The Hills of Indiana. Uh, this was uh, from 1971. Again, it's on Electra. Um, and uh, he. this was recorded at the Muscle Shoals Sound Studios with a lot of the artists. So you've got um, uh, Kenneth Buttry, Dave Briggs, Norbert Putnam. Um, yeah, so again, th those connections. Um You've got Lloyd Green on steel guitar. So it is a bit of country on here as well. Um, but there's a lovely um, duet he does with um, Don Nix uh, on the track Three Angels, um, which is on one of um, uh, uh, Don Nix's albums. But this one, I think he sings, Don Nix actually sings more of the the the, um, the lead vocals on this. Um, but, uh, but Lonnie Mack uh, sings and plays the... Uh, that plays uh, uh, the piano, no, the guitar um, on the track. Um, great stuff. Really lovely album. Really soulful gospel stuff. Uh, so Lonnie Mack, really someone worth checking out. I met three angels on a rainy afternoon. They said we'll give you shelter you'll sing us a tune we sit there talking and i play my guitar after all that's what i came here for and we sang glory glory hallelujah Glory, glory, hallelujah. How kind his mercy, how sweet is his love. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Uh, I've mentioned her a couple of times, Jeannie Green. This is, here she is, her with her... her album uh mary called now this is probably um the most gospel of all the records i'm showing um produced by don nix um recorded at uh, muscle shoals studio um it's uh, a cracking record uh really nice um yeah perhaps like i said the most gospel of them all and it's got a nice sort of uh, die cut thing with a nice uh Nice religious imagery in the middle there. So that's good. Um, yeah, she was married to Marlon Green. Um, and she, she... What was her name to begin with? Um, I think it was Johnson. She recorded under a number of different names. I think Mary Johnson. Um, uh, Jeannie Johnson. I might be wrong. But yeah, cracking record, Jeannie Green. Produced by Don Nix. The Don Nix Connection. When evil surrounded, he overcame. He knew no strangers, 
every man was the same. He was our savior. That was Jeannie Green. Great record. Okay, uh, next up, who also uh, Jeannie Green sings backing vocals on, uh, is Ben Atkins, uh, Patchouli. This is from 1971. Um, uh, this is actually, he was, rec this is on uh, Stax uh, subsidiary label called Enterprise. Um, oh, there you go. And it's got one of those lovely uh, Pay 10p. Uh, duty. <laughs> I love those. So that was in, an import into the UK that had to be paid for. Um, it's got one of the greatest uh, gatefold insides. <laughs> Smashing. Uh, he he would later go by the name of uh, uh, Big Ben and Big Ben Atkins. Um, but this has got all the, the, the sort of the people you'd expect. It's recorded at uh, Muscle Shoals. Um, so you've got, as I said, Jeannie, Jeannie Green is on backing vocals. You've got David Hood, Roger Hawkins, Wayne Perkins, uh, Donald Duck Dunn. Yeah. You know with them that's going to be a, a, a nice slice of, of uh, country, gospel, soul, rock kind of music, laid back stuff. And it is. It's cracking. It's a really lovely album. I think I actually bought this when we had the first VC UK get together in Leeds um, yeah I did I bought it then yeah nothing wrong with my memory Ben Atkins cracking stuff on the brighter side of it all sometimes my troubles seem so small ain't nothing gonna bother me ain't nothing gonna bother me ain't nothing in this world gonna bother me Okay, I'm going to finish this up with three sort of uh, also ran records that are interesting and certainly fall into this category. And I've been wanting to show them at some point, and this is the only place I can really work it out. Uh, this is uh, from 1972. This is uh, Cymbal and Klinger. Now, this is very much a kind of a, a Delaney and Bonnie uh, kind of knockoff. Um, this is uh, John, I think it's Johnny. Um, Johnny Symbol and Peggy Klinger. Johnny Symbol is not his real name, is from uh, Scotland, but he went over to the States, obviously. Uh, and um, Peggy Klinger was in a group, a girl group called the uh, Klinger Sisters. Um, I, I, and allegedly they are billed as being the first female, all female rock and roll band. They started in 1956, um, and then later they would. Um, Kim Foley would take them under the under his wing, uh, sort of record pop, uh, garagey kind of stuff. Anyway, this is um, a sort of a, a soulful country uh, rock record. Um, there they are. Um, it's got on it. Uh, um, it seems to be de rigueur for a lot of these records from this time to have a cover version of "You Can't Always Get What You Want" by the, the Rolling Stones, which, of course, if you think about that, that very much falls into this category of that sort of gospel, uh, gospel rock. Anyway, um, it's a it's a sort of album. There's there's some uh, some great sort of uh, gospelly ones on here uh, that certainly fall into this category. Sadly, uh, Peggy Klinger. 
died in 1975 of a, of a drug overdose, unfortunately. Um, the next up is the Dependables, uh, Klatu Barada Niktu. All right, who knows where Klatu Barada Niktu comes from? And don't say Army of Darkness. No, um, Michael Rennie in The Day the Earth Stood Still, his name was Klatu Barada Niktu. Anyway, I don't know why on earth this album's called that. This is uh, sort of, I haven't said the term yet, Blue-Eyed Soul, um, with a kind of gospel tinge to it, with a bit of a rock. Um, connections, I think one of the members of this was from the Blues Magoos, uh, and John Nuss, Nuss um, who was in the International Submarine Band, it, it plays on this. And I do know that um, that Graham Parsons connection, because uh, the Blues, Mag Blues Magoos were big Big fans, well, big friends with uh, Graham Parsons, but yeah, I mean, there they go. Set really, set, yeah, nice, nice kind of country, uh, gospel, soul, rock. Can't can't say any fairer than that. And finally, I'm gonna uh, show this. This is um, Southern Fried, uh, a little taste of Southern Fried. Uh, again, an an only album. Um, by a group of session players. It's um, from... Now, this is the one I don't know when it was released. 1971. There we go. Oh, it's on... On Mercury. Which is not... Not... <laughs> not Electra. Um, yeah, it's got a really lovely version of, of Stand By Me. Um, uh, and um, it, the connections with this one... Are the backing singers? You've got um, backing singers uh, Mary Clayton, Clyde King, and um, Venetia Fields, who appear in all kinds of recordings. They they were the the go to um, backing singers with a bit of a gospel uh, soul feel on all kinds of stuff. So yeah, there you go. That's uh, Southern Fried. Uh, just an interesting little curio that to end with. Um, yeah, sorry if that was rambling. Sorry if it was a bit disjointed. Um, go and watch Mazzy's uh, original video, um, uh, The Gospel According to Rock and Roll. Um, and I hope there's some interesting stuff in there that you liked. Anyway, bye-bye for now. Why do you have it? Who comes and goes? Where do you keep it? Nobody knows.
she has